This is Cassandra Bjork. At 17 years old, she may be the most psychopathic person you will ever meet. Why? She and her boyfriend first brutally murdered her grandparents. Then they partied in that house for a while with their friends. What these Bonnie and Clyde wannabe kids do will really freeze your blood. A SWAT standoff leads to the arrest of homicide suspects in Gwinnett County. He was like, let's be Bonnie and Clyde. So that, yeah, I was like, okay. Cassandra was born on March 18, 2000. Her parents divorced before she was 16 years old. The biggest absence in Cassandra's life was a father figure. Even though her mother later married, Cassandra didn't get along with her stepfather. She was constantly running away from home and committing minor crimes. By the age of 16, she was already involved in many petty crimes. Among them, domestic assault, smoking weed, underage drinking. Her mom Amanda couldn't handle her anymore. Casey was a maverick. My way or highway. Simple as that. That was the only thought she had. Amanda could no longer tolerate Casey's behavior and her life of crime. She couldn't cope with her. So she talked to her grandparents and sent Casey with custody to the Lawrenceville, Georgia to live with them. Cassandra was not happy about this. Randall and Wendy wanted her to get away from this troubled life. They just wanted her to follow the basic rules and live a decent life. At first, they tolerated her. They understood and tried to help her. Casey was interested in self-defense sports. So Wendy took her to China. After the trip to China, they also went to Disney World. They thought that maybe Cassandra would be able to relax and start her educational life with a clean slate. But that didn't happen. Casey started to bring out her inner demon more and more. They fought so much at home. The neighbors had to call the police. Between 2016 and 2017, they called the police 31 times because of Casey. Casey was now constantly running away from home. Her grandmother, Wendy, reported Cassandra missing to the police and asked for help on Facebook because Cassandra was running away from home. Casey had a problem with authority. She would run away from home and not come back for days. The last time before she ran away, she fought with her grandmother Wendy and threw a glass at her. This was the last drop in the cup. During this time when Casey ran away from home, she became a lovers with Johnny Reader. Together they continued to commit the same crimes. As for Johnny, there is very little you need to know about him. Johnny is 19 years old. He's been married and divorced and just got out of the prison. Johnny's record is as bad as Casey's. On April 1st, 2017, Casey ran away again. On the same date, Wendy again asked for help on Facebook. After this post, Wendy was never heard from again. When her children and close relatives didn't hear from Wendy and Randall for a while, they decided to ask the police for help. The police went to their house and knocked on the door for a while, but there was no answer. The police left the house come back the next day. The next day on April 8th, the police came again, but no one answered the door. The police want this suspicious and decided to enter the house. When they entered the house, they found a horrible scene. Randall and Wendy had brutally murdered. At the same time, there was a report of an assault. When the police arrived on the scene, the attackers had already fled. The victims were Johnny's sister and her boyfriend. The attackers had used pepper spray, much stronger than usual one, used for bears, and attacked them to kill them. I'm not sure what time it was, oh, but we were about to eat the food we just took out, yeah. and I noticed my room is trashed, like everything's been flipped out, like all my purses have been went through, and I told my father, I know you did this, you guys, you and your girlfriend are the only ones that have been home, like just own up to it, like just own up to it and tell me, I won't call the cops or anything. At the time, he was on the phone with my mom, and he was like, so if you don't, if I own up to it, you won't call the cops. And I said, yes. So that's when he hung up, and I hung up on the police. Like, I already dialed 911. And then all of a sudden, he goes out and comes back in and just sprays us straight in our faces and starts hitting us and tells his girlfriend to go grab the bat. And I see her come in with the bat, and the first thing she does is hit me across my back. 
and I try to grab it from her, and then she hits me on the head and kicks kicking me in the stomach, and Kevin and Johnny are fighting in my room, so I chase her out to the living room, and I'm trying to grab the bat, and I hear Kevin begging my brother, like, Johnny, please don't do this. You don't have to do this, and I went in the room, and Johnny had Kevin in a chokehold, and uh, my brother's girlfriend was in there with the bat, and so I was able to, like, grab her by her hair and, like, take the bat away from her. And I started hitting my brother, telling him to let go. And then I handed the bat to Kevin. And then Kevin was going to hit my brother, but my brother caught the bat. And then we all fought over the bat. And it was me and my brother on my sofa. And then Kevin grabbed a beer bottle and told Johnny to stop, to just let us go. And, like, we won't do anything. But my brother said he, he will never do that. And so Kevin hit him on the top of the head with the beer bottle. And it shattered. After that, Johnny and Cassandra became the prime suspect. The police were looking for them everywhere. You would expect a normal couple to panic at this point, but that was not the case for Cassandra and Johnny. They went quite calmly to the house of an old friend of Johnny's. At first, they acted like everything was normal. Then Johnny picked the knife. I see Johnny grab a knife and I was like, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, what I thought could have been coming to stab me was him coming to give me a hug and say he's so sorry. And he's sorry for doing this. Sorry for everything. He told me that he loved me and he wishes he didn't bring this on us and my family. And I just kind of froze and he dropped a knife, gave my sister a hug, said the same thing. And, um, Then we went outside to every freaking cop in the county there. The police already located them. SWAT teams and many other police arrived on the scene. At first, they sent a robot inside. After calling and searching with the robot and getting no response from the Bonnie and Clyde wannabe duo, the police realized that the bathroom door was locked. After breaking the door with the robot, they saw Cassandra and Johnny lying on the floor in a pool of blood. SWAT teams then went inside. Ambulance crew rushed them to the hospital. Instead of facing justice for what they had done, they chose to make an easy escape. Their statement to the police were even more gruesome. After April 1st, they came home and killed Casey's grandparents. They lived there for a week with the dead bodies. They even had a party. They invited some of their friends. And now I will share with you a, a few minutes of footage from that police interrogation about the whole team. My grandma kicked me out and then that's she did the same thing that my mom did. Like my mom would kick me out. Then like a couple days later she would call the cops saying that I ran away when I didn't. Like sometimes like she would physically force me out of the house. Because like sometimes like I would just be like, Mom, like why are you doing this? And then, you know, she would like literally like grab my stuff and push me out the door. I go upstairs he goes into my grandpa's room and then I go into my grandpa's room. Yeah, he's he started going at it and then, you know, I could hear my grandpa just yelling, you know, them fighting and then I started getting the rush and then, you know, like, that's when I started hitting my grandma. She started like screaming and stuff and... Yeah. Was that the first hit? Yeah. In the back of the head? Yeah. Um, so I started hitting my grandma and I already had duct tape and then, you know, Johnny's doing his thing and... You know, I stopped hearing Johnny doing whatever. And so he comes in the room with me and my grandma. And, um, you know, he helps me, like, tie up my grandma with the duct tape. And, and how do you tie? How do you do that? Is it just her hands? or? I got her hands. I got her whole head. And then I got her ankles. Okay, with her hands? I guess just behind her back. Oh, like, just like this? Yeah. Okay. And Johnny helped you? Tie her up? Yeah, I mean, I mostly did it, but I needed, like, a little bit of help because, you know, she was, like, you know, m- moving around and stuff, and then, so he helped me a little bit, and then he went back into my grandpa's room, and then Johnny asked me to go get some knives. So I got some knives from downstairs in the kitchen, and I got three, like, big butcher knives. I asked her for the code to her um, safe because I already knew that she had a safe in her closet, I just didn't know what was in the safe. Mm. So, I mean, yeah. Did she tell you? Yeah, I mean, like, she kept saying, like, I'll give you money, I'll give you my keys, you know, I'll give you anything you want. Probably about, like, a thousand dollars that we found in that safe. And then we dragged my grandma into the bathroom, 
Um, <clears throat> what was the reason for that? Just to bring her to the bathroom? Yeah, I don't know why we brought her back into the bathroom. I guess we didn't want to bring her into the bedroom. Okay. So we just brought her into the bathroom. As you can see, a normal person will be in shock if they experienced even a fraction of what is described here. But Cassandra is a psychopath. She describes all these evil deeds as if she were describing a scene from the horror movie. After killing Cassandra's grandparents, they took thousand dollars from their safe and lived with it for a short time. In one week, when they when that money runs out, they go to kill Johnny's family. After ransacking his sister's room and finding no money, they try to kill them too, but they fail because her boyfriend is there that day. They want to do something similar at Johnny's friend's house, but the police arrive on the scene just in time. According to Cassandra, they were going to get some money and go her uncle in Florida and then flee the country. According to the directives, she was going to the Florida to kill her uncle too. After all this interrogation, these two young Bonnie and Clyde wannabes who were madly in love with each other broke up and they blamed each other for everything that happened. Neither took the blame. They were crazy enough to believe they could be free. According to the friends and relatives, neither of them was crazy enough to commit these crimes, but together they pushed each other to commit these heinous crimes. But nothing can change the fact that two people at such young age could commit such a brutal crimes and plan them at the same time. That's why they got the punishment they deserved. On the day of the trial, no matter how much Cassandra put on her baby-faced adolescent face, it was useless in front of the judge. Both teens were sentenced to a negotiated two-life sentence with the chance for parole in 60 years.